want to welcome you to worship today. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm standing here in our sanctuary, and we're trying to get ready uh, to have everybody join us in worship soon. We're hoping November 1st you're going to hear more about it. Uh, we are asking those of you that are sick to please stay home. Those of you that don't feel safe or belong to any of the groups that, that it could be dangerous to be around people to continue to stay home. Watch us online. We're going to be online from now till forever. Right? That, 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 this is a new medium that we're using. We're going to be there. Now, we may have some problems online in the beginning. Uh, we're still working on some technical issues, but bear with us as we, we come together to share God's word. But again, I want to thank you for giving to your church. Thank you for your giving. We've been able to, to stay open and, and, and continue to reach people the way we do. Thank you for those of you that have been giving food, dropping off food to give to Chapman. They so appreciate it. And they thank us over and over. So thank you for giving. And now, may something that we uh, say, may a prayer, may a song, may the word of God touch you and speak to you in a very special way today. Open your hearts and worship with God.
Good morning. My name is Kathy Berry, and I'd like to talk to you about love. Jesus loved the little children, all the children of the world. Red, yellow, black, white, they are all precious in his sight. Jesus loved the little children of the world. As we remember this song that we were taught long ago, and still being taught today to our children, it represents Jesus' love for us. The Bible mentions love 361 times. That's almost one scripture every day of the year. It seems that it should be an easy thing to do, but we need to be reminded to love one another every day and treat one another with kindness. Every person will be accountable to God for their own attitudes, actions, and behaviors. Ultimately, God will be the one to judge. We will have to give an account for our behavior. 1 John 4.8 says, If a Bible isn't loving and kind, it shows that he doesn't know God, for God is love. God gave us the Bible as a guide on how to navigate through life lessons on this earth. Without them, we'd be totally lost. We are so blessed to have KUMC as a role model, Bible-based church. We are a kind, loving church, and all those, no matter the color of your skin or what gender you are, we still let Jesus' light shine through us. And now, a prayer to love as Jesus loved. Heavenly Father, more and more we come to understand what the Lord Jesus meant when he said that he is one with the Father and prayed that his disciples may be one. We see that love is a precious union of heart and a sweet communion of spirit. And just as the Father and Son emanate the same powerful love, so we too are to have the same beautiful love developing in us by the power of the Spirit. Lord, we pray that the body of Christ may become union as one and abound in the unity of the Spirit more and more in love, not compromising truths, but showing a genuine concern for one another. We pray that individually and collectively, we may live godly lives in Christ Jesus and seek to encourage and edify one another, seeking to be of the same mind and having the same godly love for each other. I pray that we may be united in spirit and in purpose, and that we do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but rather with humility of mind, regard the needs of the others as more important than our own. This I ask in the name of Jesus, who died for all of us. Amen.
And now uh, let us pray. And we lift up these petitions that have been sent to me. And remember, you can always send us petitions and we lift you up in prayer. Uh, Lord, we right now, we pray for this virus. We pray that we find a vaccine. We pray for all of the men and women that are in the hospital right now. We pray, pray for the first responders. We pray for those that have lost their lives. Lord, those that have uh, lost their jobs and lost their businesses. There's been a lot of loss. And Father, we put it all in your hands and we ask for a miracle. We right now pray for our schools, for the teachers, the students, the parents, the administrators. We've had a full week of school, and so we put it in your hands, Lord. We pray for CPHI, Chapman Center, that helps feed homeless. And we thank you for agencies uh, that are going to be needed more and more because of this pandemic, Lord. We pray for our church as we begin to transition back to live worship. We're praying that November 1st, Sunday, November 1st, it will be our, our first live Sunday, and that those that are healthy will come wearing masks and, and social distancing. Lord, we, we pray for uh, uh, Elsie Camisi, Father. Elsie turned 99 this week. And Bonnie Matsey, uh, Lord, turned 98. We thank you for those beacons of our church. Uh, we lift up Jacob Maldonado, who has not been feeling well, and Kathy Berry, Father. We lift up Kelly Baker, Father. We thank you that she is uh, 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 getting rid of that cancer, and we claim it in the name of Jesus right now for Kelly. We lift up Diane Rule, who's been ill and and let her know we love her. And we pray for each and every one watching right now, wherever they're watching from. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, today I wanted to talk and preach about politics. Now, I know some of you are saying, oh, no, no, I can't. Why would he do that? Let me change. Let me leave. I, I say, please bear with me. Please bear with me because I don't know about you, but I'm struggling. I'm struggling with who to vote for. I'm struggling with the people and all the fighting and all the division. And I'm trying to find a, a, place, uh, a place in the Bible and trying to find some guide from the church of what I should do in this election. So this is, this is not a message about being a Democrat or being a Republican, but it's about being an American. And it's about being uh, a, a, a Christian. Our allegiance or our ideology should never be to a political party uh, or a movement. It should be on Christ. You know, someone once uh, tried to explain that there really is no difference between uh, uh, both parties. And I like to believe that both parties want the same, right? And, and want the same and, and, and want to fulfill the dreams of our founding fathers. But the problem is that we just disagree on how to get there. Uh, Reverend Jim Wallace, uh, trying to explain the differences of both parties, uh, explained it this way. He said, uh, a man was sailing and he was reaching his destination when his boat began to sink and he didn't know how to swim. He started to scream for help. Now, the Republicans were on the pier and so they threw him a piece of rope. The problem was the rope wasn't long enough. But they said, hey, we threw him a rope. Let him swim to get to, to, get, to get to the rest of the rope. The Democrats saw that and said, no, 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 we're going to help him. And so they, they were there and they threw him a rope and this rope was long enough and the rope reached him and he started to pull it to, to pull himself in. The problem was that they let go of the other end. Now, I'm trying to be funny. I'm not trying to pick on one or the other. But, you know, we, we as, uh, you know, our political system and, and our two party system, I think, has a lot of good people. And I think part of the problem is we just sometimes disagree on how to help and how to do things right. Now, like I've often said to you over and over, Jesus is not a Democrat or a Republican. Uh, the great evangelist Billy Graham actually was a Democrat. And his son Franklin, who is the uh, president, the leader of the Billy Graham ev evangelical movement, is a Republican. Franklin would often say that he and his father didn't always agree on politics, but what they would do is they would not vote party, but they voted issues. And they would often pray to God together, asking God for clarity. And, and, and so he believes that we should pray for our president, even now, even if we don't agree with our president, that we should pray for whoever the president is and ask God to bring unity to our country. You know, during this election process, like I do for every election since I, you know, I, and I remember it almost seems like every election gets worse and worse and more and more contentious. But I pray to God for clarity on who I should vote for. And, and yes, I, I do belong to a political party, 
But I don't always vote my party. I vote issues and I vote character. And it's not easy to figure out who to vote for. Nor as clear cut, I think, as some would like to, to believe that it is. All right? It's very divisive, even for us Christians. Now, I do not endorse either candidate, nor do I believe it is my place to do so, especially from the pulpit. But I do try to challenge you to vote. And when you vote, to vote Jesus. Now, I know some people got upset when I've said that in the past, but what I mean by that is that you need to vote the issues that you believe are in line with your faith, right? Vote Jesus means vote what you believe is in line with your faith. You know, as Christians, we are called to get involved. And for a while, I didn't believe that was to be true. I I thought that Christians needed to stay out of politics because of the whole separation of church and state. And and, and what I've learned, or what I've discovered is that, yes, we do need to separate the state from the church, but how can you leave your faith behind when you're going to vote? You see, my faith defines who I am and shapes the issues that are important to me. My faith calls me to stand up and, and, and to let the Lord's Prayer become a reality in my life. You know, in the Lord's Prayer, when we pray and we say, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we are called to bring heaven to earth, that while we're on earth, we, we're praying for the same things that we want to see in heaven. We are kingdom people. Your, your faith has to affect how you vote, even if you're not a believer in God. I believe every single person that's watching me today has a faith in something. And everyone has a basic understanding of what they believe is right and wrong. We may disagree on those concepts, but we all have a right or wrong Uh, uh, concept. We all have a set core of beliefs uh, that we live by. And so our faith influences every aspect of our lives. It motivates us to become active so that that it so if if that's the case, then we cannot ask Christians to, to leave their faith out of their politics, right? Because our faith is who we are. You know, uh, many people believe that Jesus was apolitical, that he didn't get involved in politics. He didn't care about politics. But I, I think that's not correct. Actually, I think Jesus was very political. He actually uh, uh, said something very, very political for that time. Maybe not for us today, but it, you find it in Luke uh, 4, Luke 4, verses 16 through 21. You can argue was a political statement. It says this. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He enrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. That was a political statement. That many people in the audience understood what he was saying and what he was claiming because he was making a major political stance. You know, Jesus had open debates with the ruling class at the time that oftentimes got him in trouble. He didn't hide from the tough issues, right? He took stands, controversial political stands, all the time. So your faith as a follower of Christ, your faith needs to be central in your politics, and based on that is how you should vote and what you should stand up for. Now, I want to make a point clear, though, before I go on. I am not promoting one party over the other. I am not telling you to vote Republican. I'm not telling you to vote Democrat. I don't believe either party is the party of, of, of God, is the Christian party. So, as a matter of fact, neither party reflects the full gospel. But Christians need to stand up when we see injustice, when we know something is not right and something needs to be done about it, when you see things and think it can be better. 
Now, there are certain words of caution. And, and, and uh, the book of, uh, there's a book by Adam Hamilton that I'm getting a lot of my material from today. And, and, he, and he talks about three things that Christians need to be careful when it comes to our faith and our politics, uh, especially mixing. Number one, we need to be careful when using faith to support evil. You see, some people, some religions, some pastors use their religion to promote evil, use their faith to promote their agendas and their bigotries and their exclusiveness. And so we need to be careful. I think we Christians sometimes misunderstand the third commandment. Third commandment says, do not take the Lord's name in vain. We often think that's about cussing. Now, I'm not a fan of cussing. I'm not saying we should be cussing, but that's not about cussing and saying bad words. It's actually about misusing God's name, to use God's name to promote evil. You see, too many people during the time of Moses were using God's name to promote their own agendas, to promote evil acts on other people, and they would use the Bible, the scriptures at the time. It it even happens in our time today. I mean, uh, think about the people who took down the planes in, in 9-11. They, were actually, uh, they actually were saying that they were doing it for God. Or I think about groups like the KKK. They've often used the Bible to promote some of their ideology. Throughout our history, over and over, the word of God has been twisted and manipulated. So when, when we use the Lord's name to promote destruction and hate, We are wrong, and we're breaking this commandment. You know, uh, two of the people that break this commandment more often, two types of people, preachers and politicians. You know, unfortunately, I've read and heard from some pastors and some politicians promoting hate and bigotry and using their faith. Be careful when you hear from someone who is claiming that they are a messenger from God. People often say that they're speaking on behalf of God, but the problem is that they do it in ways that God did not intend. This is why God made Scripture available and accessible to all people. It's important you read your Bible and make sure you're reading it in the right context. Pray before you read your Bible. Ask God to give you discernment when reading. Read with other people so that you can share your ideas together and let that mold your faith. We need to be careful who we're listening to. We need to be careful. Before you listen to any pastor or person claiming to speak for God, including me, find out more about that person. Also, pray to God and ask God before you listen to any message from anyone to give you the right discernment. You know, when someone uh, says they're speaking to God, uh, for God, I usually, I usually put their words to a test. Are they speaking about destruction or are they speaking about creation? Because see, God is a God of creation. God is about lifting up. God is about love. God is not about destruction. I know in the Old Testament there was some destruction, but Jesus came, and so we live in a New Testament. We are uh, people that live in, in a new covenant. So God is about creation, is about building up not destroying. Be careful for people who are using their faith, promoting uh, hate. And that's one thing we need to be careful. Second thing you need to be careful when you're talking about faith and politics is oversimplifying our faith. It's po- uh, using faith to polarize or, 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 or using certainty. What do I mean by those things? Well, first of all, we all want a simple God. We really do. We want a simple faith. We want to understand God in simple terms so we can come up with simple solutions to the world's complex problems. Adam Hamilton talks about this, and he says that we want God to fit in our black and white world. We sometimes see every issue as either black or white, but we live in a world of gray. You see, not everything is black or white. There's all kinds of complexities that that we live in that we have to take into consideration. Now, people say that the Bible is very clear in all the areas, but it's not very clear. The Bible is actually more gray in some areas that we would like to admit. Now, I'm not going to go into detail today what those gray areas are, but they're there. 
I, I, I don't care what people say. They're there, which is why. I mean, think about it. Why do we have so many denominations? Because we can't agree on the claims of the Bible. So we need to be careful that we understand it in different ways. Now, I do believe that in spite of those great gray areas, that ultimate truth is found in the Word of God. And I hold on to that truth. And I live, I try to live that truth. I'll give you an example about how faith has changed and faith changes. I want to remind you that even your faith is probably not the same today as it was when you were a child or even 10 years ago. All our faiths and understanding of God have gone through some form of transformation, some form of growth. Why is that? Because we all grow in our faith. My faith actually has grown and expanded even in the five years that I've been here as your pastor. Now, let me reassure you of something, though. God, the Bible says God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God does not change. We, and maybe our understandings of God, begin to change, but God remains the same. God is the solid truth, the solid foundation. Our faith is on a journey. So be careful with your religious certainties, especially when you base your politics on them. Our faith needs to be on Christ, not on our theology, not on our denominations, not on our political party or a person. It needs to be on God. And God, we learn over and over in the Bible, God is love. John 3.16, the basic, most famous passage in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only son, and that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. It's based and all driven by God's love. Love is not easy, right? Love is discipline, which means that sometimes we say no to people. You cannot act that way. You cannot do that because you're harming yourself and you're harming others. Love is transforms you and the person you love. You know, during these contentious election time, we need to remember to love. Love is the central ethic of Christian faith. It is the antidote to so much pain, hostility, and brokenness in our world. And it's the most important key to finding and spreading joy and the meaning of life. You want to change a person? You want to convince somebody to to believe what you believe? To vote for the person you want to vote for? Love them. Because it is love that changes. Not a cute meme or a saying. Now, the third thing that we need to be careful when it comes to faith and politics is uh, this misconception of uh, separating politics and faith. Right? Right? Like I've said before, our faith is closely tied to our actions. If our faith is one thing, but our actions are different, we are hypocrites, right? God wrote about this, spoke about this in Isaiah 58, 2 to 9. You may want to read it, Isaiah 58, 2 to 9. Talks about it, about how you know people were, were coming to him to worship him, but the way they were acting and treating others was horrible. Now, many of us don't understand the politics of Jesus. He lived out what he believed all the time. The titles, the titles that many people during Jesus' time gave him were political titles that spoke about who he was. The king of kings, the lords of lords, that's what they were calling uh, Tiberius Caesar. So when his followers were calling him that, that was a political statement. One can argue that Jesus cared about health care. Because he spent so much of his time uh, healing people. Jesus preached about helping the poor. The parable of the talents is all about taking care of the earth. The Good Samaritan story is about how to treat the foreigner and how we as a nation should treat others. And you know, in the Bible, we find all kinds of issues. And over and over, uh, the reoccurring theme is that we need to get involved. But the interesting thing is that God, that in the Bible, it, it doesn't always tell us exactly what to do. It just says we need to care and we need to get involved. You know, 
there's even a divide in religious circles today. Even us Christians can't agree on how we should vote, who to vote for, what, what, what we believe, right? As a matter of fact, uh, you can argue that there's a group that's more conservative or, or a group that's on the right and a group that's on the left. Um, one group sees Jesus as a personal savior, and they talk a lot about salvation and about righteous living. They call us towards purity and sanctification. They focus on staying away from sins and asking God into our life. The other group focuses on Jesus' call to action, right? This is sometimes called the social gospel. Now, they preach about helping the poor, accepting the outsider, loving fellow man. This group uh, 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 of the church fights when they see that there's injustice. They believe in doing God's will for good. But both groups need to remember that each is important in the kingdom of God. To Jesus, it is important to have a personal relationship with him and to live a righteous life, but to also stand up for wherever there is injustice and oppression. I believe it is finding a balance between the conservative and the progressive that one's faith can grow. These two sides can be summed up by a very simple uh, biblical phrase. Love God and love neighbor. Love God and love neighbor. Can you see it? God calls us to be involved. We need to vote. And to pick people we believe hold our values. We need to get involved and let our voice be heard. That is how the government was set up. You know, John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, uh, spoke about... uh, um, elections and about voting. And he said this, and and, and this is true even today. He's had three rules. He said, number one, vote for the person judge most worthy. Two, he said, speak no evil of the person voted against. And three, respect those voting for the other side. So we need to be a little bit more like that. To me, the find ultimate victory in the polls is not who gets elected, but the fact that we get to decide who gets elected. It is not only our right as Americans, but it is our God-given right, which is why we need to go out and vote. And when we vote, vote Jesus. You know, I I end with the, the phrase from our Declaration of Independence that to me sums it all up. It says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal." And that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Amen.
Thank you again for joining us in worship today. Uh, You know, I'm standing here in an empty sanctuary, and we're waiting for the day when we can come together. We're praying it's going to be November 1st, uh, and that people come, and we're going to ask folks to wear their mask, to stay socially distant, to be safe. If, If any of you are sick, or if any of you belong to one of the groups that is dangerous for you to be outside, or if any of you do not feel safe, please stay home. Uh, we're going to continue to do worship online. It's, it's going to look different. We're going to uh, not be as crisp in the beginning. Probably you're going to have some mistakes. Bear with us. Uh, but again, I want to thank you for your support. Thank you for the food, for Chapman, and for what you give to the church. And now, may God bless you. May God keep you. May his face shine upon you. And go and vote. And vote your faith. God bless you. And go in peace.